Hey everybody, this is Garrett with Franklin Time, and today I'm coming to you from Long Beach, California, where I'm staying on top of what is known as Signal Hill, an important historic hill here in Southern California, but also one with some amazing geology that helps set up that history. So join me today, let's learn about Signal Hill. So why is it called Signal Hill? Well, it turns out the indigenous people here, the Puhu Tiam, used to use this hill to signal across the valley to the other tribes in the area. And when the first Spanish explorers came in here, they recognized that there were signals coming off of this hill, and that's where it got its name, Signal Hill. And they have this statue in the middle of the park to represent that history here. Now, once the Spanish came here, it sounds like they use this hill as well for, for as a lookout. And if you look behind me, Catalina Island sits off there in the haze. And so the indigenous people that were living here could signal to the indigenous people of Catalina Island. So as you look behind me, you can notice there's not a lot of hills as I turn around and pan around in this area specifically. It turns out the geology here is really important for why this hill exists. There's, there are two faults on either side of this hill that create a pop-up here, and they're strike-slip faults. And I'll go ahead and draw you a picture of what that looks like now. This is a reminder of what a strike-slip fault looks like. So a strike-slip fault is one which slides past itself as opposed to something like a normal fault or thrust fault where one block moves up or down relative to the other one. The San Andreas fault zone is probably the most famous strike slip fault zone for those of us here in the United States of America and it runs the length of California. So on my trusty drawing board here I drew a couple of things. The red features here are faults, specifically they're strike slip faults and you'll notice the arrow motion. If we remember that block diagram that tells me that this block is moving this direction, this block is moving this way. We call that a right lateral fault because it's moving to my right. And you'll see there's actually a step over between two of these right lateral faults. And what happens there is you'll have a little bit of a thrust fault developed in between, which basically pops this whole hill up and creates what we call an anticline. So where we have right lateral faults with what we call left step overs, we get these anticlines or push-ups. The inverse of that is true also, is if it was stepping the other way, we'd actually get a basin that developed. Now, Signal Hill is here because you have the step over between two strike slip faults that popped up this hill and created what we call a trap for trapping hydrocarbons, which we're going to talk some more about during this video. Now, because those faults pop this hill up, a couple things to be aware of. One, there are faults running right along either side of, of this feature and probably cutting through it as well. And because we're in the San, and San Andreas system or the greater San Andreas fault system, it means most of the faults out here can activate and can cause earthquakes. Uh, even the, the smaller ones that like potentially make up this hill. So this became an important economic center in the 1930s. And why was that? Well, it was because oil was discovered here. And we all know that oil and water don't mix and we know oil floats on water. The same thing happens in the subsurface. So as oil is being generated by um, organisms that died from a long time ago, the oil tries to migrate or move its way all the way up to the surface because it's buoyant. It's floating on the water in the subsurface. And eventually there's places like this hill that can trap and pull all that oil. So think of an upside down bowl trapping all of that oil. And these hills or anticlines, as we call them in geology, are fantastic places for that to happen. And in the 1920s, oil was discovered here on top of this hill. In fact, it would end up being known as Porcupine Hill because there's so many oil derricks that dotted this landscape in the 1920s and 30s. And here's a, a picture of that. And it says, 1922, the hill's vast oil resources were tapped with a gusher forming a new signal hill that took four days to cap to the cheers of the crowd that had gathered to watch. Two years later, the city of Signal Hill was established and it got the nickname Porcupine Hill. And you can get, see the picture and an image of all the derricks on top of this hill where we're at today. And if I walk over and we look today, it's really old houses that are up here. There are still pump jacks here, however, and we can see it right here. So you can see this pump jack behind me, and I'll actually take you down to the discovery well that actually started all of Signal Hill as an oil province, and really Long Beach as an oil province. So there are really kind of three things that I think drove the population of California in the early 1900s. You had agriculture, 
Of course, you had Hollywood coming into the area, and then you had the big oil booms of the 1920s and 30s, and they're still producing oil out of areas in this section even today. So I moved up the road just not very far, maybe about 100 yards or 100 meters or so, but what I want to do is come take you to this statue they have here dedicated to the roughnecks that worked here in the Long Beach area working on the oil and gas fields, which really helped set up some of the economy here in California early on and brought in a lot of business and a lot of people here, again, like Hollywood, like the citrus industry that brought a lot of folks in here kind of in that early 1900s time frame. Now, from this vantage point, way off in the distance, we're looking across Long Beach. There's actually a series of islands out there and they call them the Thumb Islands. And you may see some lights on out there. They are actually ongoing oil derricks or oil producing areas that are actually out in the bay of long beach and what they've done fascinating enough is created them to look like more tropical islands or more like islands that don't stand out as just big oil derricks out in the ocean things like we see in the gulf of mexico uh, where i live in texas now what's fascinating about this and what i've read and somebody can fact check me on this to make sure it's true one of the interesting stories I read about about the Thumb Islands out here is that they actually had a designer from Disneyland come out and help design them so they can help hide uh, the, the oil infrastructure that's there. And someday I hope I can make it out there to visit. I think it would be fascinating to learn and tour those islands and learn a little bit more about them. But they have ongoing oil production here in California today. And some of that happens here in the Long Beach Harbor or just off Long Beach here in the Thumb Islands. Before I leave this part of the hill, a couple of things to point out. One, there's another pump jack down there, and you'll see that in green down there. But you also, you can look at the topography here from where I'm standing down to the homes below, something, you know, 100 feet or so down. So what does that tell me as a geoscientist or geologist? It tells me there must be a fault somewhere close to this area to create this topography. So there's probably a fault running along the backside of, of this feature somewhere, which has helped pop up obviously this anticline and we can see downtown long beach in the port of los angeles in the background as well okay from the roughneck statue here overlooking towards the port of los angeles and downtown long beach let's go down and take a look at the shell number one well or the discovery well here at signal hill okay i've moved on the southern end of the hill and i'm actually at the discovery well park and as I look up here, you can see off to the south that we're actually at the end of the anticline here, just like we we're at the end of the anticline at the, my first stop. So this is what we call a plunging anticline for those keeping score for geologic terms. This is the discovery of oil on the hill. And in the 1920s, Signal Hill was really a farming community. And then, of course, they drilled the well here. And on June 23rd, 1921, Dutch Shell Oil Company now shell oil company discovered oil here and we'll go take a look at the alamitos well number one that's just to the right of me it also says that alamitos one sparked a black gold fever here and there are 270 wells in the signal hill area operated by 37 companies that produce over 140,000 barrels of oil a day that's a lot of oil especially for back in the 1920s I'm not sure when this plaque was put in place or this park was made, but it says at the time of this, they'd already produced over a billion barrels of oil here. And they think there's another 2 billion barrels still left in this general area. Very, very important. And you can imagine for the early economies in the 1920s, 1930s, something like the oil from California really helped drive the economy here on the West Coast. And looking across at the park down there, one, what a beautiful view and a beautiful park. But you get a real idea about this hill that I'm sitting on and this plunging nature of this hill. So we talked about the history here a bit. We'll go take a look now at the original well. So I'm walking down the path from the Discovery Park and what's pretty neat is actually have a, a number of drill bits. These would be a bit more modern drill bits here, but these are the kinds of things that would go down and they'd be turning and then these would turn and then help grind up the rocks so they could drill the oil wells. So this is a nice drill bit and they have a series of these. Along these posts, I'm assuming leading to the Alamacitas number one. And here's a plaque 
Talking about that discovery wheel here at Signal Hill, June 25th, 1921, one of the world's most famous wheels, the Alamitos No. 1, was started on March 23rd, 1921, so it took them three months to drill it. It went to a depth of 3,114 feet and it was flowing 590 barrels of oil a day. This discovery well led to the development of one of the most productive oil fields in the world and helped to establish California as a major oil producing state. Behind me, this pump jack says the Alamitos number one. So this was the discovery site that led to the huge oil boom here and the production of over a billion barrels of oil. That's just fascinating. And right next to it, they have a small pump jack that's that's actually working right now. So you can get an idea of what these things look like when they're actually happening. Pretty cool to see. And just a reminder that there's still oil and gas being produced here in Southern California. Thanks everybody for joining me today to learn about the unique geology and history of Signal Hill. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. Leave comments down below. I'm sure there's folks who are going to watch this that are way more familiar and maybe even from this area that can add some, some depth and add some knowledge to what I've already presented here and help me learn as well as the other folks watching this. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Keep up on all my adventures on history and geology. As I go to these new places, I'm learning and trying to share that all with you as I'm going there a lot of times for the first time. I will see you all in the next adventure. Please take care. Goodbye.